Okay, today we're going to take the energy investment model that we talked about in a previous uh, lecture and we're going to do a bit more with it to try and understand it a bit more and uh, try and look at ways of using it in, in real time. I don't think I've ever credited anybody with the energy investment model and I'm not sure where it comes from. It's been around for a long time in the learning and development world. Some people attribute it to Stephen Covey. Um, I don't know if that's true, but uh, I'd just like to say thanks to whoever's it was. Um, take it on a bit further. So we, we talked about our energy and our attitude and we talked about noticing that we have victims and spectators and players and we talked about how the, the impact of each of those uh, can be very mildly on the, on the workplace. But now I'm interested, as a manager or as a leader, how do we manage each of those four different types? And if we take the victims first, and how do we manage the victims? Well, it's a very lonely place, and I think with each of the four types, what we've got to focus on is um, looking at what that individual needs. So the victims, for example, one of the most powerful things that we can we can do is to try and understand what it is that's driven them into that mentality, what's created the negative attitude and the low energy. Because they're going to need one of two things from us. If you can imagine, and I'll just draw right here at the top, this kind of seesaw that sits. And our job as managers is to combine the amount of support we give with the amount of challenge that we give. Um, and the victims the first thing we need to do is to try and find out, well, what is it? What, why are they down there? Why, are they, why have they been left feeling negative? Why have they been left feeling in this victim mentality? So the kind of things we can, we can help them with is we can listen to them and find out what is going on. We can ask questions um, and just see what it is that's got them into that frame of mind. So that would take the form of quite a high level of support. And then gently we can start suggesting, well, why don't you do this and, why, and, and giving, them, giving them challenges, giving them small targets that they can work towards. Um, and similarly, the spectators of this world, you've got to ask yourself the question. And again, it's back to that simple one of let's find out what it is, what's going on for this individual. I'll give you an example. There was a chap I worked with from a, a, motor, a motor car manufacturer and he was in sales. And he was a perfectly good salesman, but he never excelled excelled he never really kind of became salesman of the month and that kind of thing but interestingly when you got talking to him you realized that he used all his energy and all his motivation outside of work he was a chair of governors at a local school he ran a local football club he was a scout leader he was on the parish council and all of his player mentality he delivered outside in his community so for him work was just a, a function to, to earn money. And so what you're trying to work out with these guys is, is it a gap of skills or is it something to do with their will? Is it something to do with their, their desire? And once you work that out, you may find that it's actually a, a will gap and they don't want to be any more than what they are. Or you may find that there's a skills gap and they need some training or some support or some development or some challenge and then some support to, over, to meet that challenge. Now then let's drop down to the bottom right hand corner and let's talk a little bit about our cynics. And now sometimes, and I've used this model very effectively when I've managed cynics, to actually just talk through the model and leave it sitting with people. So actually that forms a little bit of kind of challenge really. And once they know how they come across, um, they can make some choices about whether they're happy with that. So you can deliver a little bit of challenge to these individuals, but crucially be there with support to back them up. Don't hang them out to dry because they weren't recruited into the business for these cynical qualities, were they? The, your organisation wasn't looking for, you know, a negative, downbeat, depressing individual to suck the lifeblood out of all their employees. What, what probably happened is they were actually came in, they came in with many of the right qualities, but they were overloaded. Lots of change happened. They might have had lots of different managers. They may have been overlooked and possibly they dropped from originally what was a player's box and found themselves down there. So our cynics could be overloaded, overworked, underappreciated players. And we need to support and challenge them to lift them back up and give them some responsibility. And then finally, the players. And I think if you're going to, I think the crucial thing with players is not to overdo the challenge side of things. Because if you overdo the challenge with players, you can see the weight of that challenge could drive them down. So we need to make sure we really balance support and appreciation for our players as well. 
And so there you have it, the energy investment model and a, and a brief whiz through how do you manage those different people and get the best out of them. I hope that's helpful. Do uh, tune in again for another, another one of our lectures and we'll see you very soon. Thank you.